well. Welcome back to New York Sports Wicker Media. I'm Watts UK99. Thank you, as always, for taking the time to watch these videos. Man, oh man, what a Thursday night game this was. This felt like a celebration nearly from start to finish. As the New York Jets defeat the New England Patriots 24-3, I know the Jets had snapped their losing streak week 18 last season. But that game, it was in Foxborough. There were a lot of backups. There was really nothing at stake, really nothing on the line. It was two bad teams. The Jets, the Jets were just the better of the worst teams. This game felt like the turning of the page in what we'll call a rivalry because it has been very one-sided for basically a quarter century. And a lot of people were very concerned about this game, concerned about you know New England being able to run the ball against the Jets' run defense, which has not been good at all this year. You know, I think that was probably the biggest concern most people had. And also with Robert Sala, the Jets have not been very good at all playing on short weeks. You know, they have been outscored nearly by by double in their Thursday night game since Robert Sala has been the head coach. And for years, it always felt like the Patriots were more prepared than the Jets. They were out coaching the Jets for most of the last 25 years. You know, and that's a credit to Bill Belichick and his staff. Well, Bill ain't there anymore. And I thought in this game, it was established very quickly who was ready to play this game and who wasn't. Okay, on defense, the Patriots missed 13 tackles, cost them 100 yards. And all we'd heard about was the run game. How, you know, the Patriots can't complete a pass to the wide receivers. They're going to run, 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 make the Jets stop it. Well, on their first two drives, the Patriots ran nine plays. Seven of them were passes. I thought they got way too cute, and they played right into the Jets' hands. And, hey, credit to, credit to Jeff Ulbrich and Robert Sala, too. They blitzed 33% of the time. They know they're a little bit beat up at defensive end right now, very, very limited at that position. And so they realize if we're going to generate a pass rush, we can't just do it rushing four all the time. So the willingness to adjust I thought was very, very encouraging. But going back to the start of this game, I like the Jets starting fast with the no huddle offense. The Patriots did not look ready for it. I didn't think they were. They looked like they were able to handle either of the two uh, Jets running backs. They couldn't handle Hall's speed. They couldn't handle Allen's power. And it was working until the penalty on Morgan Moses and then a subsequent sack killed the drive. But the Jets defense immediately forces a three and out. Then comes the first Jets touchdown drive. And that's going to take us to our first play of the game you may not remember that affected the outcome. You got 622 to go in the first quarter. Jets already have two first downs. And on first and 10, it's a handoff to Brees Hall for no game. But Jelani Tavai, after the handoff, basically just pushes Aaron Rodgers down. Unnecessary roughness, 15-yard penalty. And four plays later, Alan Lazard is in the end zone. Jets get an early touchdown at 7 to nothing. Now, the second play of the game that we're going to talk about is on the very next drive. So now the Patriots are down and they need to counter. They convert a one-third down and a nine-yard pass to Hunter Henry, one of only two catches he'd make this week after making nine last week in Seattle. Then comes an incomplete pass and a three-yard three run. So now New England has third down. Brissett drops back. It's third and seven. And three Jets absolutely swallow him up like Joey Chestnut swallows hot dogs on the 4th of July. Clemens, McDonald, Quinn, and Williams. The Patriot offensive line, which was down multiple starters and playing multiple rookies, never stood a chance. You know, we've learned as Jets fans, two things really can kill an offense. Inept quarterback play and inept blocking. And the Pats were guilty of the latter all night. Caden Wallace, the third-round rookie, did not look ready to play in the NFL at all. He took a bunch of penalties. He kept getting beat. And then the Jets take the ball. They go right down the field, 13 plays, 91 yards, nearly an eight-minute drive, and it culminates with Brees Hall scoring on the third and one that uh, had to be overturned. But it was clearly a touchdown. He did break the point. Jets just imposed their will on New England. And again, I got to come back to this. The Jets are so much better on third down than they were last season. I, this has to get talked about. Last year, they were, what, 26%, 27%? The worst in the league. In this game, they were 66%. Even against San Francisco, they completed 60% of their third downs. So then we get to the end of the first half. That was a little bit awkward. Uh, Patriots get a field goal in large part due to a defensive pass interference penalty. And then the Jets are driving late in the half. 
And I think uh, there are some people taking shots at Robert Sala for the clock management, and, and that's fair. It felt like at the end of the first half, they couldn't make up their minds if they wanted to go for the end zone or just run the clock down and kick the field goal. I just wanted to get points. I wanted to make it, you know, a two touchdown game, especially with New England getting the ball to start the second half. Ultimately, three completions in a row, and then a bad missed field goal by Greg Zerline. You know, the Jets dominated the first half, but I got to tell you, I wasn't comfortable at that point. I wasn't ready to say, yeah, we got this. But the first half stats were amazing. The first downs, the Jets had 17, Patriots had four. Total yards, 252 to 40. Time of possession, 20 minutes and 43 seconds to the Jets, 917 for New England. And I felt for the Jets to only be up four, by 11 points at the half. I was like, we should be up by way more than this. Way more. And I was really hoping they can maintain it in the second half. And then sure enough, to start the second half, New England gets the ball. First play, Stevenson stopped for minus one, followed by two incompletions. Jets get the ball on their 34, and this takes us to play three. It's now a third and one at the New England 45, and Aaron Rodgers, I couldn't believe this play. Three tight ends, like everything screamed, run to Braylon Allen, run to Braylon Allen. He fakes it. It's a play action. I couldn't believe that they actually called this play. And he finds Jeremy Rucker. I guess it was in the flat for four yards. Good job by Rucker today catching both his targets. And then it took six more plays to get 41 yards. It's 21-3. And, baby, it was curtains. You know, sure, Drake May debuted for New England. But, hey, Isaiah Davis got to carry the ball a few times. I would like to see Malachi Corley get a few chances in this game. But, you know, the Jet defense kept New England out of the end zone. Defense uh, played the way that I felt they're very, always very capable of. And just just a, a very good win for the Jets. And now you get the little mini buy before the game against Denver. Here's some final stats for the game. Then we'll get into the bold prediction recap. Total first downs, Jets with 27, New England 11. Total yards, Jets 400, Patriots 139. The Jets almost tripled the total yards. Yards per play, Jets 5.7, Patriots 2.9. And for a while there, the Jets were around eight yards per play. It was it was crazy. Third downs, come back to third downs, Jets 10 for 15, Patriots 2 for 11. Red zone conversion, Jets 3 for 4, Patriots 0 for 1. Remember last season when everybody was talking about how the Jets have the worst third down offense and worst red zone conversion percentage in the NFL? Those days are over. And final time of possession, Jets 40 minutes and four seconds, Patriots 19-56. Everything the Patriots tried to do or were supposed to try to do to win this game, running the ball, controlling the clock, the Jets did it to them. All right, now let's recap the bold predictions that I made uh, on an earlier video for this game. made five predictions. I predicted Mike Williams would catch more passes than any other Jet he came in tied for third. Conklin had five. Brees had four. Mike Williams had three. I predicted 20 points or less combined at halftime, and there were only 17, so I got that right. I predicted the Patriots running backs would score two touchdowns. Uh, did not get that right. No touchdowns at all for the uh, for the Navy and Red. Prediction number four, I said the Jets would get at least four sacks for the second straight week. They, I, they blew past that one. They got seven. I predicted no turnovers in this game. I almost got that one right, but Chuck Clark ripped the ball right out of Ramondre Stevenson's hands. That was the one turnover in the game. My score prediction was Jets 24, Patriots 14. So, hey, I got the Jets number right, but I guess I gave New England a little too much credit. All right, a couple other things I want to say about this game. You know what's so cool about the Jets offense? For all these years, it's felt like if the Jets had a play for negative yards, if they had a penalty – it felt like the end of the drive. It doesn't feel that way anymore, does it? Because Aaron Rodgers can overcome it. The Killer Bees can overcome it. This receiving combination, Garrett Wilson, Mike Williams, and I got to throw in Alan Lazard right now. They can overcome it. This offensive line, wow, they can block well enough to overcome it. How good has this line been? Now, there are certainly concerns. Morgan Moses is the chief among them right now. He got rolled up from behind, hurt his knee, it looked like Makai Becton part two, but thankfully he was able to walk off the field. And even if he does have to miss time, the Jets do have Olu Fashanu. And when he came in the game to play right tackle, I didn't think he was very noticeable. And for a rookie offensive lineman, that's good. That's good. 
It doesn't appear to be overly severe, but we're going to find out uh, soon enough. A lot of penalties. That bothered me. Eight penalties in this game. I was hopeful after last week when the Jets had a penalty-free second half that they would you know, keep that sort of play going. It was not good this week. It just wasn't. Again, that has to be shored up. And the clock management. We saw this again. Two wasted timeouts in the second half when they were getting down to uh, nearly zero seconds on the clock would have been called for a delay of game. So two wasted timeouts for the second straight week. That's got to stop immediately. So I want so and then on the positive side, like I said, we get the mini buy before Denver. A couple of people that need to be noted. Chuck Clark had a good bounce back game, I thought, with a sack and a forced fumble. Will McDonald, wow, three tackles, two sacks. Four quarterback hits. I don't think anybody's going to be calling him a bust anytime soon. Uh, Quinn Williams, three quarterback hits, had the kind of game he needed to have. The run defense was fantastic. They held Stevenson to six carries and 23 yards, and he'd been averaging 100 yards per game through the first two. Patriots, as a team, held just 78 yards on the ground. Hey, Hassan Reddick, uh, we're doing okay, uh, but you're welcome to show up uh, on our terms, uh, not yours. But if you'd like to join the party, you're, you're welcome to but we don't need you. We would just like to have you. Uh, Ty Coughlin, five catches on six targets, career high, 93 yards, big third down target in this game. And that offensive line, fantastic. Gave Aaron Rodgers a lot of time to throw the ball. He was sacked twice. He finished 27 of 35, 281 yards, two touchdowns, maybe two or three passes that were a little bit off the mark, but the offense was incredibly efficient. And man, oh man, this was one of the most fun Jet offensive performances to watch in years. In years. All right, everybody, those are my thoughts on the Jets' victory over the Patriots. If you got any thoughts or comments, put them right down there. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And I'll see you right back here with more content from you know where. The Wicker Chair.